Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are joining again the Valiant crew of the uh, Artemis 3M2 uh, as they have left Earth's SOI. You can see Earth uh, very faintly back there in the distance. There's the moon to give you uh, an idea of scale, but uh, they are firmly out of uh, Earth's influence. And uh, this is a first, like ever, for uh, this space program and uh, for me personally. So the best thing to do is to collect some science. We'll do a crew report first, uh, 10 whole science. While in space high over the sun. That was totally worth it. <laughs> 10 science for that, really? All right, uh, there's our pilot. Where is our scientist? Uh, Virginia Rodriguez will be going on EVA to take a verbose uh, EVA report while in space high over the sun. And she will be the first astronaut ever to uh, do so. She'll turn her jetpack on and go without a tether for uh, just a little EVA. Oh man, we missed it. Look at that. Uh, she's already chattering away there. She is super excited. This is, in fact, groundbreaking. All right, Rodriguez, if you could take an EVA report, please. 80 science. We'll keep that. And uh, just do a quick uh, walk over of the spacecraft. Make sure you don't see any dings or dents or uh, anything that might uh, cause us a problem later on. Um, everything looks uh, pretty good from up here. This is absolutely mind-boggling. She can look down at the Earth from this far away. All right, that's uh, that's enough goofing around, Rodriguez. Get back to the command pod. You've had your fun. Sorry to cut it so short. I know it wasn't uh, much of a spacewalk, but uh, there really isn't a whole lot to do here. We're just kind of, you know, coasting. Board. Very good. Now let's uh, review stored data and transmit that 80 science home. Won't take too long. We've got good bandwidth on this antenna and we're still not that far away. Uh, carbon dioxide tanks are not very full. Uh, we have a whole lot of lithium hydroxide. So we're actually going to turn on our CO2 scrubbers. These are wastewater. We will have to vent all of that into space. Um, after we make our uh, arrow capture. That's the word I was looking for, arrow capture at Mars. Um, so I am actually going to shift a bunch of fuels around now and other things. Oh, that's already full of fuel. Oh, good. That's food, water, oxygen, food, water, oxygen. Fantastic. What is our total? 230 days, give or take. Not bad. So, yeah, I take it it's been draining from all tanks equally, so there probably won't be much of anything worth transferring. Okay. Never mind. All right. The other order of business, now that we have taken our first ever interplanetary spacewalk, is to set up a node and refine our encounter. That would be Jupiter. Oh, boy. Can we set Mars as target? Thank you. Yeah, I'll focus view. That's kind of what I wanted to do. Um, actually, wow, this is... I may have just uh, misremembered, but I thought we were way further off course than that. That is probably not worth adjusting currently. Let's go ahead and reset our station. Set as target. Yeah, we should probably try to match our descending node here with our periapsis somewhere along our telemetry so that uh, making adjustments after the orbit will be a whole lot easier. Add maneuver. This will be in about... Okay. What is... Huh? Oh, that's the maneuver for the station. Yeah, I plotted a return trip just to see what kind of delta v figures we were looking at 
Uh, that's in 700 days, so that should be well within our life support budget for this mission. Which is good to know, because uh, I, that is a uh, concern, actually. Alright, so let's just play around with nodes and uh, see what kind of result... Hey, look at that. That is... Uh, an impact trajectory, but from the other angle, it looked almost like an impact, like collision with the station, not with the planet. Okay, so yeah, this might be a little beyond the realm. Uh, I just upped the sensitivity on my scroll wheel, and yeah, see, <laughs> every third click it just says, hey, nah. Alright, we'll keep with that at 0.4 meters per second. Good luck hitting that with any real authority. Yeah, I just don't have those skills. Not even a little bit. So, you know what, we're just going to take care of that when we get there. Alright, so I need to add an alarm for their SOI change in 154 days. Add alarm? Perfect. Ooh. This is... I'm very happy this mission is still going as well as it is, all things considered. Um, oh, you know what I can do is push fuel from this tank into this tank. Just to help shift our center of mass as close to the heat shield as possible. That is going to be our goal. So eventually, uh, like when we get to Mars, I'm going to shift life support from our primary into uh, this tank here. That will help offset us a little bit, and also all of the uh, waste product. I will shift into these two lateral tanks. We will make our aero capture. We will probably ditch one of these tanks, if not both, and then go about trying to perform rendezvous with the station. So in the meantime, activate CO2 scrubber. And let's see that uh, how that does with our electric charge. Awesome. We are still topped off and staying fully charged. That is even better. We do have, uh, f I think, full exposure on all our panels. What's this one looking like? Dot nine one. It's still giving us well over a kilowatt. Uh, not a big problem. Yeah, we're probably we're just missing out on a uh, 100 watts or so, which is not going to make or break this mission thankfully. So, there's an update on our Artemis crew. Uh, I guess now we'll uh, switch over to the station, and um, I've actually already done all of the cleaning up and deorbiting, but I figured I'd just show it to you anyway, just so you know where we're at and what we're looking at. So, I will pick all of you up there. So, just a very brief check-in, and uh, I'm pretty sure I may have mentioned that I did all of these things before in uh, another episode. This is some old footage, but uh, basically just in an effort to reduce the part count, reduce the complexity, and get rid of some of these things that we don't need anymore. I transferred uh, as pretty much all of the fuel out of some of these tugs and then uh, proceeded to deorbit them, and that uh, just helps me get a better idea of exactly how much fuel we have on board. So uh, after all is said and done, we got the station down to one fully topped off uh, fuel slug, one fully topped off life support slug, and one tug. And uh, the rest of it we just uh, made into more Mars dust. But anyway, we've got some other business to attend to. All right, and uh, now we're at our Mars lander, which uh, we could not derive an accurate telemetry because of the moon. The stupid moon. So, uh, we have left Earth's SOI. That's Jupiter. Never mind. Uh, Earth will be around here somewhere. Uh, we've probably warped a couple of days uh, since we last left the Artemis. And now we're going to warp ten more days until we get to this node that will... Uh, let me just bring up the map view here. Eventually. Eventually. There it is. Yeah. So uh, this was our resultant course after our last burn. We're going to correct it to uh, bring us up here. And uh, we're doing it at our uh, solar periapsis, uh, perihelion, I think. Not entirely sure. Anyway, 
Uh, about 65.3 meters per second, well within our budget, so we will just uh, go ahead and warp uh, closer to our node and get this uh, little touch-up underway. Yeah, no, okay. Kerbal Alarm Clock has other plans for us, apparently, as we are now dropping out of time. Uh, I really wonder what this is. All right, reconditioning pad complete. That's totally worth being dumped out of time warp. And very nice to see how... Uh, I mean, it looks like we're moving pretty fast, rel given the uh, relative distance here. Oh, come on, again? Now what? Uh. Ah, it's our Earth-Mars transfer point. So it's been three days uh, since we last talked to the Artemis. And we have nothing else to launch uh, this round, so that will conclude our dealings with said Mars window. I guess that was a useful alarm to have around. Okay. Uh, I, I may have done that prematurely. Okay. And that too. These things happen. <laughs> All right, uh, a minute and 10 seconds out from our node. Is our engine still active? Uh, yes, and now it is stable. I don't think it'll even take us a minute. Um, yeah, I. that's interesting. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll just go ahead and light it up and see what happens. Uh, we'll get it down to about 30 seconds. Why not just uh, use some of this RCS fuel? Because it's way less efficient than using the main engine. That's a good reason, isn't it? Alright, we'll just do most of it, touch it up on RCS once we're uh, all in there just a little closer. Can't really see the node. There it is. Alright, well, we're within 1.4. up to 1.6. Let's see what that bought us. Our node is still 10 seconds away. So, oh man, we're still way down here. This is the difference that 1.6 meters per second can make. So, we'll just uh, use RCS to try to touch this up as best we can. Uh, you know, I'll take it. Bingo. I know it's a collision course, but we can adjust for that later. I'd rather uh, rather come in a little too hot than come in a little too shallow. So, all right. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So, until then, see you later.